Not only are oysters delicious, they're vacuum cleaners for our harbors. One adult oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day. Many of America's waterways are extremely polluted thanks to agricultural runoff, sewage, and industrial waste. Polluted waterways harm sea life and threaten our health as well. But where there's a problem, there's always a solution. And in this case, it's a solution that you can snack on at a local bar. More oysters? Yes, please. So I want to know, can oysters save our waterways? To find out, I'm going to meet with the good people at the Billion Oyster Project, who are on a mission to clean and restore New York Harbor with oysters by 2035. I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. Today's episode sponsored by Fidelity. What happens to the oyster shell after you eat it at the restaurant? Well, most likely it's going to landfill. But if you're in New York City, your old oyster shells, they could be right behind me in this pile, which has been collected by the Billion Oyster Project. New York City used to be a hot spot for oysters. In 1609, when Henry Hudson arrived in the Big Apple, there were about 350 square miles of oyster reefs in New York Harbor. That was half of the world's oysters. This historic oyster population was once able to filter the entire harbor in just days. By 1910, over-harvesting and water pollution caused the oyster population to dwindle. Practices of dumping untreated sewage directly into the harbor caused oysters and wildlife to suffer. And by 1927, the oyster capital of the world was no more. That's where the Billion Oyster Project comes in. Launched in 2014, their mission is to return a billion oysters to New York waterways. One adult oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day. So that's a really important part of what they do here in our harbor. Anne Fraioli is the Director of Education for the Billion Oyster Project. Another really important thing that they do is they create reefs. They cement on top of each other and they create three-dimensional structure underwater which attracts a lot of biodiversity. And that's what we should have here in the harbor because it's an estuary. And estuaries are places where other organisms come to breed and to have nurseries for their young. Is that how the filtering is happening, their feeding? It's part of their feeding process at the filtering. The oyster opens up just a little bit. It has hairs called cilia along the edge of its body. It waves those cilia, which creates a little water current. So the oyster is kind of sucking water in and any particles will stick to the side of the oyster's body. And it can actually tell the difference between algae, which is food for the oyster, or another particle, like uh, organic particle of sewage. And it'll eat the algae, and it'll take any other particles, cover them in a shell-like substance, and eject them. So then those particles drop down into the mud. And there in the mud, those particles can be processed by other organisms that can't process them in the water column. So they're really clearing the water and helping move things through the system. Billion Oyster Project works with 75 restaurant partners around New York City to collect spent oyster shells. The shells are picked up once a week and delivered to Governor's Island off the side of Manhattan, where they sit for a year so that oyster flesh, cocktail sauce, or any remaining organic material is washed off by the rain and sun. So it's pretty amazing. We're taking these oyster shells out of the waste stream from restaurants that would just end up in landfill, and they will be used in our hatchery as a base for oyster larvae to set on. So live oysters will attach to one of these big blank shells and then grow their own shell and become part of our, our restoration. A couple different things that can happen with these. Sometimes we put this into our larvae tanks okay. so the larva will set on them. Got it. And then we might even take them out of this bag and put them into another structure for restoration. Mm -hmm. If this is the actual thing that's going into the harbor, then yes, we would, we would lay them down next to each other and create some sort of mound or a wall, which could also be a type of a restoration reef. I wanna take a moment to thank Fidelity for sponsoring this episode. Fidelity's Climate Action Fund allows people to invest their money in companies that are taking action against the impacts of climate change. Not only does this help support businesses with sustainable practices, 
It allows investors to rest easy knowing their money is helping the planet and inspiring change. Head over to Fidelity.com to learn more about sustainable investing with the Climate Action Fund. Now, back to the episode. Anne pulled up a test cage to show me how oysters grow off of shells. Yeah, so here's a great example of, of uh, look at this great clam worm here. You're going to come out and see us? No. Wow. Right? So how many oysters are on that one shell? Like How many live oysters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? These adults are big enough to breed, uh, which is what we want, right? So we want enough adult oysters in the harbor so that they can start to breed in the harbor and that the babies, the larvae, will find their way back to the reef and cement again to the reef. So yeah, these are great, beautiful. Beautiful big oysters. Throughout the summer, the Billion Oyster Project and their volunteers restore the oysters to the harbor. So far, they've done reef restoration projects in 15 areas across the five boroughs. To date, they've collected an impressive 1.6 million pounds of oyster shells and have introduced 47 million oysters to the harbor. But their work is nowhere near done. About 20 billion gallons of sewage are still released into New York Harbor each year and humans will not be able to eat oysters out of New York waterways in our lifetime. I'm so grateful to the good people at Billion Oyster Project and Lighthouse for opening up their doors to us. They're doing such amazing work right here in New York to restore New York's harbors, and I just absolutely love this local solution for a local problem. If you want to support the work of Billion Oyster Project in New York, check out their website where they got a list of all the restaurant partners that they work with, and next time you're eating oysters at one of those restaurants, you'll know you're doing something good for New York's harbors. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. First oyster ever. <laughs> what do you think? It's actually really good. <laughs>